This week's property developers want to invest £5,000 doing up their tiny London flat so they can rent it out for £1,200 a month. Welcome to the series that shows you how to make big money from your property. This week's novice property developers are hoping to make a killing on their London flat by doing it up to rent out. They want the monthly cash because they've already got their eyes on the next property they want to develop, a cottage in the north of Scotland. Jill Mead and Steve Benbow are both professional photographers and avid beekeepers, which they keep on the roof above their fourth floor flat. The road they live on is south of the Thames in the heart of London. They own a flat in a big block that's a stone's throw from Tower Bridge. And just down the road, the new headquarters of the London Mayor, Ken Livingstone, is being constructed. They've owned the flat for nine months, and they've never developed anywhere before. But they'd like to make some serious cash from their small two-bedroom dwelling. And if they do it right, they will. It's an ex-council flat on the fourth floor. And like thousands of others around the country, Jill has taken advantage of the right to buy scheme, which enables you to buy your council flat at a discounted rate. So Jill got the flat at half price at around 46,000. It's now worth 120,000 pounds, but they're not allowed to sell it for another two years. So instead, they're going to rent it out for 1,200 pounds a month. After they have paid off the monthly mortgage of £300, they'll clear £900 profit. But to get the £900 for their Scottish project, they're going to have to do something about their flat. They call it cosy, I call it a mess. They love reclaimed furniture and the place is full of it. But this isn't the start to attract some serious money from wealthier tenants, and that's where I come in. The flat has one double bedroom, a small bathroom, a second bedroom they're using as a study, a sitting room and a reasonably sized kitchen. It's February and they want to refurbish the lot by August, but they have a very limited budget. How much have you got in total to spend um, on the whole flat? We've got a huge figure <laughs> of about £5,000. If you want to spend £5,000 on this flat, you will get more rental income from it, which makes sense. It's a lot for us, £5,000. <laughs> What's your plan in this room, then? Um, and I love cooking, so um, we were looking at maybe closing off this door here because the biggest thing about this kitchen is there's no real work surfaces. Right. The first thing I'd say is that either you're doing this flat for you and you're going to stay here I, or you're yeah. doing it to rent out. And okay. if you're doing it to rent out, really, the fact you like cooking, you shouldn't think be thinking about that because it's all you want is the most money to come in for this flat. OK. Um, yeah, I know. I agree. Yeah, good point. Yeah. It's very important with the kitchen to try and maximise the space. So I would keep this end of the room completely empty of everything. Remove all the cupboards and get rid of the fridge and put an under worktop fridge, a low fridge, in under one of the units over here. And you can have a really smart modern kitchen at this end and make the room feel a lot bigger. In that way, you will, you will maximise the value rental value and end value of the flat. You're saying that we should just put in some cheap... Cheap MFI, MFI really? Yeah. I mean, that's I Jill's probably a shot to the heart wow. for you, something I, like that. Wow, I mean, I just why, why put something like that in, which is totally disgusting? It's really hard thinking about going to MFI because it's somewhere we'd never go in a million years. Absolutely, and I appreciate that that's not your style, and you don't want it like that. You're thinking more about how it how it feels to live in the flat, yeah, and you sort of got to get <laughs> out of your head. Um, what it's like to live in the flat and think simply mm. about how for as little money as possible you can maximise its rental income. Yeah. From the kitchen, it's a short hop across the corridor to the biggest of the two bedrooms. This should be emptied, freshened up and the cupboards need doors. They might also put in a smaller bed to give it a bit more room. From the bedroom, we go back to the corridor and into the bathroom. The bathroom suite's old and crumbling. The bath's damaged and it needs retiling. So I think they should just gut the lot and instead put in a cheap white suite and install a power shower. I find that renters love them, especially the professionals, with no time to spare. Next to the bathroom is a small box room that Jill and Steve have been using as a study, but I think there are better uses. It's probably better to make this into a bedroom because if it's a couple who want to study they'll be looking for a two-bedroom flat and they'll they'll think well i can use a second bedroom as a study 
Whereas if you call it a one bedroom flat with a study, it's it's worth less than a two bedroom flat that someone might use a second mm. bedroom as a study. Yeah, yeah. It's not too small actually. No, I mean, you get lovely long at the end of the day. So transforming this study into a bedroom will allow them to advertise a two bed flat and put the price up. Finally, there's the living room. This room definitely needs clearing and attacking with a slap of paint. Jill and Steve need to leave the flat part furnished, just the big things like sofas, wardrobes, beds, fridge and washing machine. Then renters can bring all they need in the boot of a car. So this is what I'm advising them to do. One, change the study into a second bedroom. Two, freshen the place up top to bottom with a new coat of paint. Three, gut the bathroom and put in a cheap white suite. Four, doors on all cupboards and last but not least number five throw out the entire kitchen and put in a cheap off the peg set of units it's a lot of work to fit around their day jobs and the five thousand pound budget is their life savings and how scared are you by all of this you know if we're going to embark on it we've got to do it we've got to implement it and get on with it now actually put it put it into reality haven't mm. we but yeah no it is a bit scary it is because it's been home for ages yeah I'm a little bit scared. All right, OK. Mm? <laughs> the advice I've just given them is the plain, simple, cheap approach to getting your property ready to rent. But I think they want to go down a slightly more bohemian route, a bit more style and panache than plain, simple lines. The big questions are, can they do it within their tiny budget? And will it be robust enough to stand up to carefree renters? I'm going to do what I can to help, but they're going to need a lot of luck. Jill and Steve are fitting their developing around their day jobs. So the next evening, I tell them how to split up their budget. It's really important with a budget as small as yours that you stay on budget. Every time I see a property, before we've bought it, put an offer in anything, this is what I do in my head. Mm. I break it down into three or four specific areas where we'll be spending money and then it stick to budget on those areas. If you if you get sidetracked, you can end up in trouble. This is what I'm advising. Firstly, a nice kitchen and bathroom can sell a property on their own. So half the budget, two and a half thousand on the kitchen and a thousand on a new bathroom. That leaves a thousand on flooring and new furniture and 500 on decoration and styling, which brings us up to the princely sum of 5,000 pounds. Keep this figure in your head all the time. Yes, and if one figure goes up, you've got to bring another figure down. Mm. And that's the way you keep on budget. So how do you feel about this now it's all clearly laid out? No, no, I feel good. It's it, Now that you've broken it all down, it's clear. And I agree about moving stuff around. If, if you're over on one area, then, you know, you've got to trim off the other. I agree. Okay, no, it's a lot clearer. Whatever property you're developing, breaking down the budget is the most important part of the process. I've given my advice as to the budget and the work that needs to be done. Now it's time to check out the area. Jill and Steve are in an up-and-coming area in this part of Bermondsey. Prices are on the up in the local papers and more estate agencies are moving into the neighbourhood. It's a good sign of a growing market. But how can you find the next up-and-coming area close to your home? Well, let's look for the signs which apply wherever you live. Firstly, look for rundown industrial areas which could be developed into luxury flats like these. Also, look for new companies that are moving into the area. They'll bring prosperity and more renters. There's a new European base for United Designers. Watch out for new council buildings. That'll also make the area wealthier. The new mayor's headquarters is going to attract a lot of jobs to the area and there'll be more people wanting to rent. Down at the waterfront, it's becoming very fashionable in the evenings. There's more restaurants opening, more bars. It's quite a happening place to be down there. This is another sign that an area is on the up. Posh restaurants and fancy delis that start moving in. This area was heavily industrialised until 50 years ago and lay dormant until the 1980s. So look for similar rundown industrial areas close to you that are ripe for development. These poorer pockets close to affluent areas could hold the key to your first million on the property ladder. But this post-industrial area isn't suited to families. It's more roof terraces than gardens. So Jill and Steve should market their flat to one of these like the city financiers who work just the other side of the bridge. 
As I drive the streets, Jill and Steve make a shock decision about the kitchen and consult an architect. What they want to do is knock down this wall that separates the kitchen and the hallway. This will give them an open plan kitchen, but it goes against my advice of maximising the rent with two sharers. It'll reduce the privacy for the main bedroom tenant as people in the kitchen will see them coming and going at all hours. It's such a bad idea. It's going to cost £1,400. It's not in their budget and it won't increase the rent. But the architect's already here to check it isn't a supporting wall, propping up the roof above them. They're taking advantage of the architect in-house scheme run once every year by the Royal Institute of British Architects. For a £15 donation to Shelter, you get a free one-hour consultation with an architect. Low level. We just really want an expert opinion on it, really. Well, let's see what it's made out of, see if we can get rid of it, and then you can have your wish. Hey, we're laughing here. This is great. Yeah. Yeah. No, and there are, we're, we're fine. The yeah. only problem here is also is all these pipe, this pipe work and everything that's there as well from the old boiler. Yeah, um, we can get a plumber to look at that, but right. um, why don't we just take it down and put it below the floor? I think the space that we're probably going to create is going to change this flat radically. Okay. Um, the only moment of caution I've got about this, um, it doesn't look like plaster to me. Um, underneath there. It looks like an old-fashioned hard board, and the worry about old-fashioned hard boards is they used to be made out of asbestos. Oh. My advice on asbestos is to be completely careful around it. Uh, it it's carcinogenic. It, it can it can cause major problems. Yeah, if it's there, we want it out. And what they do is seal around the area and take it away. So the threat looms of asbestos. Jill and Steve want it out now, whether or not they knock the wall down. It's always the unexpected that can scupper your developing, and this will cost hundreds to remove and will probably mean an end to the whole project. Our budding property developers, Jill and Steve, are having their walls tested for asbestos because they want to develop their flat to rent out. They're ploughing five grand into the place to refurbish it and hope to clear £900 rental a month. But if there is asbestos, it'll cost them hundreds of pounds to get it removed, and it's sure to be the end of their project. Ah. Well, as you can see, there's plasterboard there with plaster on top. It's obviously been refurbed at some stage, so now we know there's no asbestos, we can carry on with our work taking the wall out. OK, well, that is a great relief, actually. Um, it means we can get started. Yeah, because if we had found asbestos here, the whole job would have been stopped. Asbestos would have had to come in and sort the problem out. OK. How long would that have taken? Uh, weeks. Really? Yeah. OK. Well, that's great news. Now that worry's cleared up, it's time for them to plan their changes. I'm taking them to visit a rental flat close by for inspiration. It's a small one-bedroom and rents for a respectable £900 a month. You must always research your market well. Students might like a cheaper and funkier decoration scheme, but this flat's aimed at city workers who expect higher standards. It's best to decide on furnished or unfurnished. The owner of this flat has gone for furnished. This is becoming more popular with the increase in shorter work contracts and therefore short lets. With soft furnishings, always choose dark colours if you're going to let. They'll minimise staining and pick furniture with loose covers that can be easily washed. For the decoration scheme, always stick to one colour throughout, preferably off-white or cream. This will ease redecoration between tenants and pale colours can bear a sense of cleanliness and light. If installing a new kitchen, stick with a simple modern design that's easy to maintain and keep clean. Install durable flooring, the renters delight a power shower, and buy inexpensive mattresses that can be turned between tenants and replaced cheaply. Let's see what Jill and Steve think of these suggestions. So this is the bedroom. Right. Yeah, As you see here, there's lots and lots of storage, and it's really plain and simple. It feels like a kind of place a guy from the city would pick up a prostitute and bring her Yeah. In. <laughs> it seems to be really quite sleazy. Let's look at the rest of this oh, and see how... <laughs> So this is the sitting room. This flat's owned by a young guy who's in his late 20s and he owns 50 properties he rents out. So he's on the top of the property ladder and, and he's very successful at doing it. This flat has been done in a very simple formula 
which I wouldn't be surprised if he reproduces in every flat that he owns. At the end of the day, he's not got personal with this. He hasn't put his heart into it. And I am really, really, really concerned about how much you are getting emotionally involved with your flat that is going to be rented out on the open rental market. This is a flat that was rented out, and this is the condition that they got it back in. How will you feel I just if feel I just you get your flat back like that? I, I know. Is this yours? No, this isn't one of mine. I mean, it is disgraceful. I would, there's yeah, no but... way anybody would ever live in our property who would do something like that. I would agree know. that this is an extreme, but what I'm saying to you is that however well you check your references and however nice your tenants appear to be, if something happens to your property, if you're not emotionally attached you will be less upset by it do these not scare you in any way are you in no way concerned there is any possibility well, of course i think it's this? yeah you're of course you're i think you know you've obviously delivered those to us to shock us a bit bring us back to earth and and i mean yeah of course it's daunting isn't it i hope the photos will persuade jill and steve to make their flat a bit more simple but obviously not because they're not going for a simple plain kitchen they decide on an expensive rustic salvage design they've seen in a magazine and the designers here for a consultation okay so this is it is it yeah blimey yeah it's interesting there's plenty of stuff in here isn't there yeah lots of clutter yes there's quite a lot of room in here just because the amount of stuff that's in here makes it look a lot smaller than it is but yeah. i think once you cleared it oh, you'd yeah, find there's quite a lot of space away, yeah the thing is, Simon, it's, um, we haven't got anywhere to cook. Yeah, so there's no, work, there's no worktops at all, is there? No, it, there's there, no there used to be a worktop in that corner and that's gone. Yeah. Jill's very attached to this cover because it's got a good bit of history to it. Yeah. Um, I think we'll probably get rid of this one. Perhaps. Oh, no, no. Have we got any sentimental attachments to this one? No, no that, that, that would be lovely for you. My favourite cover. One of Simon's kitchens takes two months to design and fit, and this one will cost £7,500. Most of that accounts for his design, instead of doing it for free, as you can do on the computer at most DIY stores. But Jill and Steve are going to offset the cost by doing £5,000 worth of photography work for Simon's new brochure, bringing the cost down to the figure I advised them to spend, £2,500. Jill and Steve have got a kitchen designer on board, and so it's time to get their flat ready to start work. This means packing up all their personal belongings and clutter and putting them into storage. And Jill and Stephen have a lot of personal belongings. I think this might be a difficult time for both of them. Hello. Hi. Hello. How are you? Hi. Oh, I see you're packing. You're Where are the labels? Um, the no label. Right. It's really important to make sure that you label everything really well. Hell, no labels at all. <laughs> Don't worry, because I bought some, because I knew you were packing, oh, so I thought I'd um, bring some just in case. There's two reasons. One, it's a good idea to have a very clear inventory, partly so that you know what's in storage, okay. but partly because when you want to go and find something, one item, a vase to show some flowers, to search through 25 boxes is really unamusing. Here we have box one. Sure. And then if you list what's in this box? It's well it's videos. Videos. Um books. Books. And believe me, I, I swear this will save your life. Sure. The other thing is that obviously if there was a fire in in the storage container mm. and you lost everything, this is a brilliant way of having an inventory for the insu for insurance purposes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can you can value everything that's mm. in there and you don't have to spend hours trying to remember. Jill's saving a lot of money by packing the stuff herself. They have so much junk. If they actually got rid of it all, they could save the £680 storage cost over the next four months. Should we get packing on that then? Yeah. Okay, let's go get all those boxes. Um... When it comes to packing, choose your containers well. Most storage companies will have good quality boxes for sale or plastic crates for hire. You can save a huge pile of cash by getting your friends to help you move boxes into storage. But if you have to hire someone, try your local man with a van. They're cheaper than official removals as they don't have full insurance cover. It's a risk, but it'll save you money. If you do go for an official removal firm, then always check their insurance and if they pick up from flats that have stairs and no lift. Oh, and don't overfill boxes, or you'll not be able to lift them, particularly when packing books. 
Here's a tip for you. Many storage companies charge less for units on upper floors. If you're feeling strong, you can save money this way. Make sure there's adequate security measures. There should be security cameras, smoke alarms, and a strict check-in policy for all visitors. Good companies should have dehumidifiers installed to protect against damp and mildew. Most storage companies require you to take out insurance. Prices start at £3 per month per £1,000 value of goods. However, to save money, check if your own household insurance will cover your belongings. Make sure you make the most of your unit by using all the space, including the upper parts. And finally, don't forget to make sure that the labels on your boxes face outwards so they can be easily seen. And so that's it. Great. Jill and Steve are paying £170 a month for this storage, so they'll have to crack on with the developing to keep this unbudgeted cost to a minimum. A quick recap. Always use strong containers. A man with a van will be cheaper than a removals company. Make sure that your storage facility has adequate security. Check to see if your household insurance covers your belongings while stored and keep your labels outwards. So, how do you feel? I don't know, it's grubby and it looks horrible. It's all echo, it's like a bookside set. There'll be an initial burst of enthusiasm you'll have to do it and it's really important to grasp that. Because you're working at the same time, it'll quite quickly wear off and you'll quite quickly find the whole thing rather depressing. Mm. <laughs> and if you can achieve a lot to begin with, it, yeah. will, it will be a good thing in the future. Financially, it's, it's the right thing to do and be, mm. it'll stop the site dragging on and on and on. So they take my advice and push along with things by refurbishing the bath. Jill damaged it with her processing chemicals and there was talk of re-enameling. But Jill has found a cheaper way, repolishing, and I think it's really worth considering. This chap takes the top layer of the enamel off and polishes what's left underneath. It only costs £100 compared to two to £300 for re-enameling. That is beautiful. That is just absolutely beautiful. It's like a different bath. Yeah, yeah. Next, they go against my advice and knock the wall down in the kitchen, leaving an open hallway. It'll make the flat look more spacious and light will come in from all the windows. But it's costing them around 1,400 quid, something they haven't budgeted for, and I think it's an unnecessary waste of money. There's no turning back now. There's mess everywhere and Jill's left wondering where to pull back the cash. Jill Meads renovating her central London flat along with her boyfriend, Steve Benbow. It's May and they want it on the rental market by August. Jill's making a start on the painting herself to keep the costs down. Time to offer some advice. Oh, this is a really nice colour. Do you like it really? Yeah. You see, I thought you were going to come in and say, you can't put this on the wall because it's not neutral enough. But it's very neutral. I think it's really nice. One of the things when you're painting a wall, it's a good idea. You always want to cut in the edge first, go round and cut in the edges. Yeah. And then when you're painting, you always want to go in two different directions. Do you see here you've got drag lines? Yeah, yeah. If you paint in another direction and another direction, you lose the drag lines. Yeah, I would do. But do you see what I mean? Do you see the lines in the paint? Yeah, I do. For sure, if we do the next one, we would definitely... Every bit of your advice we would have been to. <laughs> Are all your properties, um, are they all completely sort of the same colour right throughout? The rental properties rental are, property. yes. Another way Jill's trying to keep costs down is to sand and varnish the floors herself with the help of local builder Ray Goodridge. She desperately needs to save money because the wall demolition and furniture storage weren't in their original budget. Wooden floorboards are a great attraction when you're coming to rent or sell. But if you have a lease, check you're allowed to have them exposed because of the possible noise problem to the people below. Also, don't forget your target market. A family in suburbia may well prefer carpets. Yeah. Swap this into the grove, like so. Okay. Here we go, so it's all set up very low. This sanding machine costs £47 per day to hire and comes with £60 worth of sandpaper that you pay for as you use. Three quick tips for sanding floorboards. First, get rid of all exposed nails using a hammer and punch. Second, sand diagonally. This means there's less chance of ripping the sandpaper. And third, never stand still with a sander on because this can leave unsightly grooves. 
couple of weeks later, and Jill and Steve are off to see their kitchen designer, Simon Turner. He's got materials to show them for their handmade kitchen, which will include copper-fronted units and an expensive oak worktop. I've advised them against this, as a simple, cheap, off-the-peg kitchen would be better for the wear and tear of renting. I thought I'd meet them there to try to persuade them to be less extravagant. I suspect lots of expensive materials are about to be dangled in front of them. So, how are you getting on with the design of the kitchen? We've got a set of drawings, which are rough sketches after what we discussed already, and also got some samples of wood and things to show you. So, that's probably the best way to start, is to actually sort of go through the materials that we've got. And um, you can have a look at those, um, see if you like them, see if you think they're appropriate for a flat that's going to be rented out. This is the copper. Cool, that's a nice colour, isn't okay, it? Sorry, it's a bit of a strange shape, this one. But um, basically, this is um, used copper. This came from an old people's home in um, New Haven. That's actually outside, is it? Yeah, that's the bit that was actually on the roof. You, you can actually do it in a, in a sort of use chemicals to actually get it like that. But this has actually been sitting outside for 40, 50 years, so it's actually gone it, done it naturally. How would you look at attaching it onto the doors, then? Um, you that literally one? just wrap it round. So it's almost like wrapping a present. So you can have a piece of MDF or a piece of plywood mm. and actually just wrap the whole thing around. I'm just thinking if a tenant's there, and they won't look after it. So if a tenant's in the flat, if it's able to be dented, they'll dent it. Mm. You know, this is but a flat rent to rent. To renting out, isn't it? And mm. they need to be very tough and very durable or easily replaceable. Mm. And this, this, I don't, I'm a bit concerned this isn't going to be either. But if it's actually mounted onto a piece of board then, if it's actually glued on, it mm. can be completely flat anyway. There's nothing more they can do to it. Mm, I'm not convinced. Anyway, worktop's next. This is um, French, actually. And that's, so we were talking before about having the bark on it, but I do think that's quite a bad idea, actually, sort of thinking about crumbs. it. Crumbs. <laughs> this about crumbs this that, is so. an incredibly expensive lump of wood. How much would a three metre length of this worktop be? It'd be about £400, something like that. Are your tenants truly going to appreciate the hundreds of pounds you're going to spend on a piece of worktop. We're not necessarily completely worried about money at the end of the day. It's a piece of reclaimed wood. And if, if it's what we believe in and what we will think will make a feature out of the kitchen, then I think it's something that we'd like to run with. I mean, I know they're tenants, but to a certain extent, we are going to try and find someone with a similar sensibility. I really hope that you do get these wonderful tenants who think, oh, you know, there's been so much love and, and effort put into this flat. We're really going to look after it and make, create it and have it as our home. But I just i am not sure that everyone else in London is quite as nice as you. This kitchen should cost £7,500, but they're doing £5,000 of photography for Simon's new brochure, bringing the total cost down to 2500 so they're on budget, but they're still far too personally involved. Believe me, I've seen rental flats with worktops like this cleaved in half by evil tenants. Now the kitchen's sorted out, it's time to hunt for more reclaimed articles for their flat. You can find good reclamation yards all over the country. This one's in Camberwell, South London. Wow, look, this is wonderful. And we're after some cheap taps for the kitchen. I've dealt with these places for years as I've been doing up properties. Here's some tips to help you close the deal. Now these ones are gorgeous, John. What would those be? They're yeah, one, two, five. Can I get them out? Yeah. One, two, five. Yeah. Rule number one, don't go too low. Maybe start at two thirds of the price. Yeah, one, two, five. Mm. So would you take 80? I'll take 100. <laughs> <laughs> take 100, you take 90. Oh no. Rule number two, have a laugh. But be polite. Oh, I will. I promise I will. <laughs> Send me quiz. Rule number three. For that extra last minute discount, get the money in his hand as soon as humanly possible. Oh, look. No. Think that's, that's six beers. <laughs> that's 12 beers. That's 18 beers. Think how many beers you can have tonight with that. For those. Oh, you see? Yeah. Now, that is a deal, isn't it? Yeah, go on. Thanks, John. Yeah, Thanks very much, mate. Cheers, John. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers, John. Cheers, John. Cheers, John. So that's a done deal. Jill and Steve had their kitchen tax for about a quarter of the price that they would have cost for me. Next, they want a bargain bathroom suite. I'd suggest her getting one dirt cheap in a discount warehouse, but Jill and Steve want something unique and, unfortunately, expensive. If you're after the same, then head to a specialist reclamation centre. And a system for this? 
Well, what about this one? Uh, no, this is a bit refurbished. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've taken the main guts out of it. I've taken out the siphon. Um, you kind of the, the ball cock and the overflows will come off. All you've got to do is um, use a bit of elbow grease to scale it. How much would that be? This whole thing, if this was A1 and in the showroom, you'd be looking around about sort of 225, 250, something right, like that. Okay. Um, if you want to do the work yourself, yeah. which won't take much now that most of it's been done. Yeah. Um, round 150, I could do that for. A hundred quid discount, it pays to ask about these things. And it's a quality suite, not a modern and mass-produced one. This is probably a good, a good compromise because it's still got style, but it's relatively cheap. So Jill and Steve have picked up a suite for 500 quid. Still too expensive, I think. What do you think? Yeah, I think they're lovely. I think they're fine. Yeah, it's what you really want as well, isn't it? So in goes the new suite, piece by piece. But it's come at a high price. To get the whole bathroom done comes to £2,000, twice what I told them to budget for. They're really living dangerously. With two months to go to their August deadline, June is going to be a busy month for Jill and Steve. Time to see how close they are to renting their London flat out. So how my DIY virgins then? Um, well... Holes in the wall? Yeah, it's been quite daunting, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's starting to come together. There's been a few things that we've sort of just cracked on with. I suddenly set about a wall, plastering it last week. <laughs> <laughs> Have you had some organisational problems as well? Yeah, it has been a little frustrating, yeah. One of the worst things is that we'll get something done and then something will affect it, like the floor. That's not finished, and a little bit mess of it now, so it's got to be sanded over again. Um, and there was, just wasn't time to do it. That is something I've learnt from bitter experience, <laughs> that... Um, it's really unwise to leave an unsealed floor. That will have soaked right into the boards now. And however much you sand it, I think I'll be quite lucky to actually get it back to being unstained ever. So what's happening with the kitchen? Where is it? Certainly the kitchen has sort of hit a bit of a wall in terms of it's, it's been a little sort of um, slow, to say the least, doesn't it? What's the hold up with the kitchen? Simon, is there anything that you think that you could have done to encourage him to push it forward um no we tried lots of things for simon haven't we no he's just very very busy jill and steve could have avoided this delay and saved money by installing a cheap kitchen from b and q or mfi weeks ago but they're now beginning to pay the penalty for their handmade kitchen it takes time to build from scratch they're still waiting for the new kitchen at the beginning of July when Jill and Steve must start thinking about whether they'll be landlords or employ someone to do it for them. So I take them to meet a letting agent who manages a flat in the next block. So how much do you rent this flat out for? Um, against current market valuation, I'd be looking to achieve about £230, £240 a week. So marketing at a value of £240, which is £1,040 a month. That's £160 less than Jill and Steve are hoping for. And bear in mind, if you use an agent, you'll pay around 15% a month in fees, which brings the figure down to about 880 before tax. But for that, you'll get hassle-free renting. The agents will usually bear the cost of advertising. They'll deal with all deposits, credit checks, repairs and meter readings. Their legal team will sort out contracts and offer special insurance in case the tenant does a bunk. I have a few rental properties under my belt, so I prefer to remain in control and be a landlord myself. But if you're new to the game and busy with work like Jill and Steve, a letting agency may be the best way. Let's see. So there you have it. You either get an easier life by going with an agent or keep the money for yourself and let it yourself, manage it yourself. It's a difficult decision to make. I expect you want some time to think about it. Oh, yes. Yeah, we do need time to think about it. But it boils down to the sort of person that goes into our flat. But before they can think about tenants, the kitchen needs to be fitted. And at long last, by the end of July, it's installed. Now the race is on for Jill and Steve to meet their August deadline and get the flat on the rental market. Steve and Jill are putting the final touches to their flat after doing it up to rent out. It's August and they're hoping to have it on the market in the next couple of weeks at a projected £1,200 a month. 
It's been a hard journey because they've been living in the flat and doing all the work before and after their day jobs as photographers. Their original budget for all the changes was £5,000, but they've gone up to £10,000. The bathroom cost £2,000, twice what they'd estimated, and they've spent a lot of money outside their budget, like £1,400 to knock down the wall and £640 for storage, not to mention £300 on customised glass and £530 on curtains. But the transformation is fantastic. The flat's changed beyond belief over the last six months. With the wall down, the kitchen's been opened up. They have their handmade kitchen with matching copper accessories, reclaimed fixtures like taps, and some expensive personal touches here and there. But this handmade kitchen was against my advice of a simple, plain off-the-shelf number, and it comes at a price. The worktops are warping. The plywood unit edges are splintered, and the copper wrapping has sharp edges. There are cut marks around the sink and the draining grooves are ineffective. There are no drawers for cutlery, and the copper's not discoloured and tarnished as Jill and Steve had requested. There's a roughness to it, there's a hastiness to everything, and there's just, there is, just isn't attention to detail, and that's, that's a shame, it's very sad. And he has assured us in his defence that he will come in and, and put new work services on for us because we're not happy with them because they've started to walk. Do you feel, in hindsight, that it actually might have been easier, considering it's a rental flat, to go and buy a nice kitchen from a kitchen shop that was ready made you've just said the word there nice and that's it really it would have been just nice and we wanted something with a bit more character and a bit more sort of a bit more depth really which okay we've got with a shed load of problems but it's not all doom and gloom the rest of the flat's looking wonderful they've emptied the sitting room of all their odds and ends painted the walls sanded the floors and bought some stylish furniture it's very important that your furniture is either made before 1950, which it looks like it is, um, or after 1990, so it complies with fire right. regulations. Well, this sofa is um, relatively new, so that's fine. In the bathroom, they've put in a reclaimed suite. It's costly, but nice. Taken my advice and installed a power shower, the renter's favorite, and tiled up to the ceiling to give the walls some protection. Expensive, are they? Well, they are expensive, yeah, they are. And they, you should just have them individually sort of framed, I think, because they're so exquisite. The wardrobe doors look stylish in the bedroom, much better than the ropey old curtains that came before. It's really good to see that all the clutter's gone again. They've also taken my suggestion about getting a smaller bed and moving it into the corner. But again, their personal taste took over, and instead of the £100 I'd have paid, they actually forked out £500, another £400 wasted. Finally, the room I have the biggest problem with, the study. This should be a second bedroom, or at least have a mattress or futon in it. It'll mean more rent, but they just won't listen to me on this one. Now, you bought the flat for £46,000, didn't you? And you were originally planning on spending £5,000 on it. And then you were hoping to rent it out for £1,200 a month, which after your £300 mortgage would clear you £900. But you went quite a lot over budget. You actually ended up spending £11,000 instead of £5,000. So that's 6000 over budget. Where do you think that you overspent probably with the wall coming down that took a um a bit of extra um jill wanted to um put in her um the bathroom so as opposed to spending maybe 300 pounds on putting in a, a cheap bathroom suite we put a reclaimed bathroom suite so that pushed the price up maybe a bit more as well we've done it in a relatively short period of time as yeah, well, as well you know, so. we've done some rash buys because mm. it's been kind of you think we need that so where did the extra cash come from what we have done is whenever we've had our jobs or extra jobs we've just that money's just come in, gone out. Mm. So anything we've had that's over and above. So is that where you found the extra money from? Well, yeah, um, and also a few sort of deals and things along the way, isn't it? And things yeah, that we've, we've yeah. done for people. Are you concerned that the tenants might damage some of your personal touches? I genuinely don't think anybody would kind of recklessly just damage things. Yeah, they might break that bowl or they might have an accident, but that happens. The next hurdle for Steve and Jill is to get tenants interested in the place, even though they're still living here. It must look as good as possible to attract big money renters. So here's some tips. 
Firstly, tidy your personal stuff away in wardrobes. The impression of space is vital, so hang up your clothes and store your shoes neatly. Put clean white linen on the bed. This will give the bedroom an air of cleanliness and the lighter colours will help the room look bigger. Cheap ways to spruce up a bathroom. Buy a new shower curtain, loose seat, bath mat and laundry basket. Put new soap and towels out to give it that freshly cleaned hotel bathroom look. Don't forget to put some fresh flowers out. Turn lights on low to give the place that seductive look and scatter a few books around to impress people with your lifestyle. Finally, just before viewers come round, pop a vanilla pod in a low temperature oven. It'll make the place smell fantastic. Just to recap, tidy your stuff away. Put clean white linen on the beds. Get a new shower curtain and change the loose seat. Arrange fresh flowers around the property. Finally, make the flat smell tempting with a vanilla pod or freshly brewed coffee. So that should impress the viewers. Now let's see how much cash they can expect by getting the letting agents to look over the place. Initial thoughts on the room, you have to say you notice first off the size. Um, it is a little bit limited, but they've made the most of it, I think, keeping the furniture fairly simple. It's not a bad size bedroom. Um, not too big, not too small. Um, I think the good thing about it is it does have fitted wardrobes. I think if you did use the study as a second bedroom, it would definitely add to the value of the flat for a rental basis. You would remove all of this, you would put a four foot double in, so you've got two bedrooms rather than one bedroom, and the potential is that you can increase the monthly rental. The combination of the wooden flooring and the tiling, and the colour scheme as well is very good. The plus point they have done is the power shower. Most tenants nowadays, and certainly the more professional ones, expect that sort of thing as standard. And now the centrepiece of the flat, the kitchen. It's not everyone's cup of tea. Not everybody's going to like it, but um, it's really down to a matter of taste, I would say. The only concern I would possibly have with it is, possibly from the owner's point of view, how much money have they invested in it, and will they therefore see that sort of return when it comes to renting it out? So let's talk hard cash. I'm fairly certain we could achieve something around 1100 a month as is, as a one, one and a half bed. Possibly a little bit more, possibly 1200 max as a two bed. I think if we market the property as a one bedroom uh, with a study, we'll achieve 1100 per calendar month. Uh, if we go and try and let it as a two bedroom, we'll achieve 1300. In current condition, as a one bedroom, 1100 pounds per calendar month. And as a two bedroom, if you turn the second bedroom into a proper bedroom, £1,300 per calendar month. We've had three agents look at the flat to value it for rental, and they said it should get £1,100 a month. But if you had the second room as a bedroom rather than a study, you should get 1200 or possibly even 1300 a month. Is that enough to actually persuade you to change it into a bedroom for a study? Well, I think 1100 is heaps. Um, you were originally honest, hoping for 1200 though, weren't you? Well... Yeah, and I guess we knew that not having a second bedroom would knock down the price. But why do you want to throw away £150 a month by simply not making it into a second bedroom? I'm not saying we would definitely not have two bedrooms, Sarah. But We're we... just saying what we personally oh. believe would work. And, and not just that. I mean, if we, we just think it would be that, and we're not really that money-driven. No, we're not. And it's, 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 the flat works better as one bedroom. Do you think that you'll be landlords yourself, or do you think that you'll use an agent? I think we might have a go at letting it, letting it ourselves if we can find someone that we know. So Jill and Steve obviously won't have the city financiers who bring in the big money. They want like-minded people who'll pay less. So what do these folk think of the place? Maybe get a little futon, a double futon in or something, I suppose. It's quite small. At the moment, it's set up as a study, sort of like an office. Mm. It's difficult to visualise yeah. it as a bedroom. I think it'd be better having a second bedroom for guests. It's yeah. big enough for a bed along there. TV's too small. <laughs> I think it's really cosy. It's yeah, nice like, atmosphere. I like the wooden bed. Spacious, airy. Yeah. I mean, it looks a lot more spacious because it's got such a high ceiling. That's a bonus here. Small rooms, the penalty you pay for living in central London. Is it right, mate? Yeah, that's pretty good. Oh, wow, that's excellent. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah. It's ideal, so you've got a proper shower and a decent bath as well. This is a lovely room. Nice bookshelf, nice colours. They're probably a bit too girly, the colours, really, apart from the blue in the bathroom. 
looks like it's a, quite a small wardrobe. I don't think we'll be able to fit all of uh, Anna's clothes into there. I think out of all the rooms, it's probably my favourite. I like the fact that there's this great big surface, a sort of Jamie Oliver style. This is something very original. Units. There's a lot of storage room in there, obviously very deep cupboards as well. I don't like the copper. It shows the drips for a start, which is no good, but um, just doesn't appeal to me. Give it a few months and be a lot of polishing having to be done there. So how much would they be willing to pay? I would be reluctant to pay more than £1,100 a month. I think we'd pay 1100 a month between us. I mean, we're paying 1040 at the moment. Um, maybe a little bit more than that, but no more than 1100 So if you get £1,100 for the flat, after your £300 mortgage, you've got £800 left a month. What are you going to spend it on? Uh, we had a look up in Scotland, haven't we, at a, a few places. A little lodge. Potentially fantastic. Wow. Well, it is fantastic. Um, it's just a matter, I think, really, of assessing what needs doing to it, really, isn't it? We didn't really want to buy somewhere that was kind of finished and perfect and beautiful. And I think we'd like to do most of the work ourselves. We sort of did want a project that, where, you know, you put your own personality into it. So Jill and Steve have the developing bug, but I really hope they take all my advice this time because the stakes are higher. The £12,000 cottage could cost up to 30000 to do up, and I hope they don't get a call asking them back to London to fix a problem with their handmade kitchen, as I've warned them countless times. Renting your property out can give you a very nice income, but you must detach yourself emotionally from what may have been your home. Jill and Steve have never stopped thinking and acting as if they're going to carry on living here. As a result, they've massively overspent on personal features that could be ruined by carefree renters. If you're looking for rental income, my advice, without exception, is keep it simple, keep it cheap, and don't get personal.